So far, in our GNU radio related exercises, we have restricted our consideration to symbol error rates. However, as we have seen, symbol error rates and bit error rates have a significant difference. In this lecture, we are going to essentially build a, an approach to measure the bit error rates for various constellations and confirm that these bit error rates are consistent with what you would observe in theoretical knowledge which we have seen in the class earlier. So, we will essentially generate random symbols and check the bit errors that these symbol errors essentially translate to and we will also confirm that these bit errors are consistent with the theoretical evaluation that we did in the class. Before we commence our discussion on bit error rates, let us make an observation about the Gaussian noise source that is provided with GNU radio. Let us first take the Gaussian noise source by doing control F or command F and typing noise and we get the noise source and for reasons that will be clear shortly, let me also grab another noise source. I am just going to copy paste this. So, I am going to hit control C or command C in Mac and control V or command V to paste and let us make the second noise source, let us rather let us make the first noise source over here a float. Both of them have amplitude 1 except that the first noise source is float while the second noise source is complex. Now, we want to view the distribution of these two. Uh, preferably, we will visualize them on the same histogram except that I am just going to take the real part of this complex noise source. So, let me do control F or command F and say complex to float and let me grab this actually let us grab complex to real that is that makes it easier. This just takes the real part. Now, I have the complex to real. I will add a throttle. So, control F or command F. Let us grab a throttle, place it here, we will make our throttle float, connect this over here. Next, let us grab a QT GUI histogram sync, so control F for command F, type hist. Now, we would like to view two, uh, two basically the histogram of two signals over here, so double click this. As always, let us increase the number of points. The bins can be 100, that is fine. Let us make the x-axis go from minus 4 through 4 because we know that a Gaussian uh, has a lot of its values between minus 3 and 3 and then let us make the number of inputs 2. Now, we connect these two over here and we are ready to visualize. Let us visualize this flow graph. Now, as you can see, the data 0 is the first sequence that comes from the real noise source, while the data 1, which is red, is the second noise source, rather the real part of the complex noise source. It is evident that it, the second one, the complex noise source, seems to be narrower and taller while the first one seems to be you know seems to have be fatter and shorter like if you just hide this you can see that it is definitely fatter and taller let's just make things a little more accurate uh, i think uh, let's add one more point over here and let me also increase the sampling rate to 192000 and let's visualize now, it is very evident that the red one is taller while the blue one is shorter and fatter. Now, what does this mean? If you remember from the expression for the Gaussian, it is 1 by sigma root 2 pi e power minus x square by sigma square into 2 for 0 mean that is, whenever the sigma is smaller, your Gaussian will be narrower and taller. Whenever the sigma is larger, the Gaussian will be fatter and shorter. 
this basically indicates that the real part of the complex source essentially is gaussian noise that it has a lower variance why is this the reason is because the noise from the complex gaussian noise source yields complex gaussian noise that is real part and imaginary part each having half the variance in other words this particular red part has a variance of half while the other one the imaginary part will have a variance of half if you don't believe me uh, we will use the fact that this gaussian noise source essentially has two independent gaussians and if i now take the independent gaussian from the real and the one from the imaginary and add them i will get similar variances let me show you so let's first remove this and let's grab a complex to float so that we get the real and imaginary parts now the real and imaginary parts are both independent therefore if i now get an adder i control f and i say add and grab the adder and i make the adder double click on it make it float if i now connect this and connect this over here and connect this over here now if you visualize you will see that both of them are roughly overlapping indicating that both of them have zero mean and have the same variance or this confirms the you know hypothesis that the two different real and imaginary parts that make up the complex gaussian noise source essentially have variance half each in this case the variance is half because the amplitude i have chosen is 1 if the amplitude i have chosen let's say is 4 then the variance will be so 4 means the variance will be 16 so the variance will be 8 each if i choose the amplitude to be root 2 then the variance will be 2 and 1 each for the real and imaginary parts this aspect is something that you need to be aware of because whenever you do evaluations with real valued constellations such as bpsk or pam4 or pam16 and so on be aware that the noise you add should be real because the complex noise anyway does not contribute and therefore you may make slight errors in your bit error rate or symbol error rate computations in order to compute bit errors we need to evaluate xors so to do that we will just take a very small detour and check how xors can be done using python so that we can build a nice python block to do our xors so let us first import numpy after importing numpy let me create a small array consisting of some integers and these integers can be thought of as representing some of the message values of your mpam system for example if we have pam4 our messages would be one of 0 1 2 or 3 so so the transmitted messages are 1 0 1 2 1 and 3 that correspond to the bit sequence 0 1 because 1 can be represented in binary as 0 1 0 0 0 1 1 0 0 1 1 1 now let us introduce two bit errors let us assume that this 1 is essentially flipped to 0 so this becomes essentially 0 0 and this 3 both the bits are flipped and this also becomes 0 0 so let's check so as you can see the 0 1 bit sequence here became 0 0 
while the one one bit sequence here became zero zero, meaning that in our one, two, three, four, twelve bits we have introduced three bit errors. Now, to find out the bit errors that we have, we were we are going to perform an XOR of these two, and NumPy allows you to do a bitwise XOR by using the bitwise XOR function. So if we inspect the error pattern, we can clearly see that there is no bit error here. Let's just make things neater once. So as you can see, there is no bit pattern in this one. There's no bit pattern here. There is exactly one bit error here because this essentially becomes it goes from 1 it, it goes from basically 0 1 to 0 0 so there's one bit error here and then there is 0 bit errors here 0 bit errors here and there are two bit errors here which is very evident which is why you get 3 which represents 1 1 so now we are just going to count the number of bit errors from this particular sequence next to calculate the total number of bit errors, which by the way, it's not 1 plus 3, 4 because this corresponds to 1 bit error and this 3 corresponds only to 2 bit errors. What we will do is, we will use an inbuilt NumPy function called unpack bits. Okay, so unpack bits requires you to have unsigned bytes therefore we will just convert our array into that type now if you run this particular code what you get is you will get essentially you had one two three four five six you had about six bits so you're going to have each of those converted to 8 bit patterns 1 2 3 4 5 so it's essentially you're going to get something of length 48 so you can verify this so and what are these 48 these 48 are bit representations they are essentially converting the 8 bit 8 bit bytes into their bitwise representations so essentially this 0 1 which is sitting here was that 1 and the 3 became 1 and 1. Now you can just sum this. You get 3. You can practice this for some other combinations and verify that this allows you to count the number of bit changes. This is the approach that we will be employing in order to compute the number of bit errors that we will encounter in GNU radio as well. So now one thing that we wish to do is to only output bit errors corresponding to the symbols that generate those bit errors. In other words, if you look at this particular error pattern, then this particular error pattern came about from six, you know, PAM4 or QPSK symbols. Therefore, the six PAM4 or QPSK symbols correspond to 12 bits. So our goal would be to output exactly 12 zeros or ones indicating whether each of those 12 bits is in error or not. So the next task for us is to convert these into 12 bit patterns. That is very simple because even though this has 48 elements, we only need the last two bits of every one of the eight of eight elements so we will just reduce this array to get our bit error pattern so to do that we will just take the seventh byte of each of these and then the eighth byte of each of these and then just put them together of course 
the order of the precise bit error locations is going to be incorrect but that is okay because we are just interested in histogramming them and the order is not significant therefore one way to do this would be let's say that we'll call this u e p for you you know unpacked error patterns so we will take u e p we want the seventh bit and from there on every eighth bit so we will say 6 colon colon 8 that gives me this particular error pattern so the 3 remember got flipped so this one corresponds to that this is the MSB of the 3 and then if I just do 7 colon colon 8 I get this one because the 1 was flipped to 0 so 0 1 became 0 0 and this one because the LSB of that 3 was flipped and now if I just concatenate these by using the plus operator or let me use the NP dot concatenate U E P 6 colon colon 8 oops sorry I'm just going to now do this and now I have my three bits and this the number of elements here is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 and therefore this corresponds precisely to the situation where I have the number of bits being rather the number of bit errors being equal to the number of bits that we are computing them for the 7 colon colon 8 is python slicing notation this gives me every 8th bit from the 7th or rather the 8th bit onwards this gives me every 8th bit from the 7th bit onwards this is something you can check out from the python documentation we will be rewriting this code in our python block in order to compute the bit errors let us now rebuild our pam based or you know qam based communication system but in this occasion we will be looking at bit errors as opposed to symbol errors so let us now build our qam four let's say quam four constellations bit error rate calculator so we will first begin as always with a random source control f or command f we will get a random source this random source will go from zero through four and we will now make this a byte we will then grab a constellation encoder ENCOD and place the encoder over here of course it needs a constellation which we will call MYCONST that is my const and I am going to now create a constellation object so control F C O N S T E and we will get the constellation object by default the constellation object already has a QPSK like constellation so we will leave it as is for now but we will just call it my const next we will add a throttle control F or command F we'll get a throttle all right we will add noise but we will always want a control on the noise so we'll first add a range control F R A N G E will grab a range we'll call this as always noise std this goes for starts with 0 goes to about let's say 10 and step is 0 0.01 and control f or command f we'll say noise source grab our noise source its amplitude is n o i s e std okay so now we will just say add control f or command f add we will connect these and finally we will view our constellation so control f or command f c o n we will grip the constellation sync and this constellation sync will show us and we will increase the number of samples to get averaging the constellation sync will 
show us these constellations and if we increase the noise you can see that the constellation starts becoming fatter because of the effect of noise. Now our next task is to ensure that we compute the bit error rates. Remember for this case there are two bits for every symbol. So we cannot have a sync block. We need a block that outputs twice the number of samples as we input. So let us begin by adding our Python block. So control F for command F. We we'll type block and we will grab the python block we will double click this and open in editor yeah so now we have to make some changes over here unlike the previous where symbol error rate in the case of symbol error rate one symbol gave you one symbol error number that is a yes or a no which is a zero or a one but in this application we have an QPSK symbol which means one symbol would lead to two possible bit error patterns. Therefore, we cannot use a sync block. We will have to use the so-called interp block. This ensures that the timing is matched and for every input symbol or input symbol pair in our case that you give, the output of this block will be two symbols which are zeros and ones which we can use to histogram for bit errors we will get rid of this string we will get rid of this uh, we don't need this parameter and then we do sh this should not be sync block this should be inter block and we're going to say be uh, we'll say qpsk PER counter that should be fine the inputs can be two bytes so we'll say int 8 int 8 and the output will also be an int 8 that consists of 0 and 1 pairs okay we don't need this example parameter we could take the decimation rate as a parameter to make it work for other quams also let's try that say decim rate and we will say equal to 2 so that you know it works for qpsk but we will extend it for to others let's say we will call this we'll call this general br counter okay so it will work for pam4 also and several other such symbols now this in sig out sig is fine we also, oh, it should not be decim rate, it should be interpret. I apologize. Yes. And finally, we'll say interp is equal to interp rate. And then we will say self dot interp rate is equal to interpret. We will also say self dot set relative rate is equal uh, to interpret. This is what GNU Radio will use to determine how many samples you are going to output. Now over here we need to write out our our sequence of commands that correspond to computing the XOR, performing the unpacking and then getting only the right sequences. So let us do that. So and we'll do the bitwise OR, bitwise XOR. Input item 0, input items 1. So this gives me the error patterns. Next task for us is to convert it to the unpacked form because this just has the errors as let's say if it's 3 it corresponds to 2 errors because it's 1 1 and so on. So we're going to say
unpack bits error patterns dot as type will convert it to u int 8 of course within quotation marks and we will then just take the we will then just take the seventh and eight bits of these and then just put them in the concatenate them and put them in the output sequence let's do that Now, let us spend a bit of time understanding what this code does. So, we have calculated the bitwise XOR between the input items 1 and input items 2 and this has markers of how many bit errors there are. Now, this BR counter will work for QPSK, QAM16 and so on. So, if you use it for something like QAM16, then the total number of patterns is essentially 16 which corresponds to 4 bits in which case we are going to have 4 bits per symbol and therefore our rate will be 4. So what we do is depending on what interpolation rate there is which corresponds to the constellations essentially M or you know uh, in, a, in for example for QAM16 the interpolation rate will be 4 we are going to compute the errors from the 8 the least significant bit towards the left and concatenate all of these. In fact, you can run this loop for all 8, it doesn't matter, but it is just more efficient for us to do this. In fact, to get the correct number of output sequences, you have to do this because if you run this, for example, for interpolate 2, it is going to get 7 minus 0. For when i 0, it is get 7 minus 0, which is the 8th bit for, uh, for all the bytes, then 7 minus 1, which is the 7th bit for all the bytes, and you concatenate all those error patterns, and then you just output them. So this approach is a nice way to calculate the bit errors very very effectively. Now this artifact is because we are writing our own bit error counter in GNU radio, there are possibly more efficient and effective ways to do this. Let us now check that this bit error rate counter works correctly. So when we save and exit, we will now have a little block called BER counter with interpret2. Let's first play with this BR counter by just giving it some fixed values and seeing whether it does the right job. So I'm going to add a couple of constant sources. So I'm going to say Ctrl F or Command F and say constant source and this constant source I need a byte and let's keep this byte as 0 and let's take another constant source and this constant source let's keep it as a byte but let's keep this as a variable constant. Let's say ber pat before ber pattern. Okay. So I'm going to connect this over here. Connect this over here. Okay. So now what I'm going to have is this ber pat should be from a range. So I say control F for command F. I'm going to say range and we will double click this and call it ber pat. And then we will make the def we will make this int. Default value is 0, start at 0, stop at 100 doesn't matter. This int can be converted to float, so I'm not, I don't have, I'm sorry, to byte, I don't need to worry. And finally, I need to just visualize this. So I'm going to get a time sync, so control F or command F. 
I'm going to say time sync and this time sync if I place it here I'm going to just uh, change it to float I also need a I think I also need a you care to float so you care to float we'll take this unsigned character and convert it to float and connect it and we're on our way now if you execute this flow graph you see that 0 and 0 when exhort gives 0 but let's say that 0 and 1 when exhort they seem to give a 1 1 and 1 when exhort sorry one you know like 1 0 and 0 0 when exhort give a 1 while if you have 1 1 both the bits are flipped so let's understand if 0 is essentially output 0 0 and 0 0 have no errors now 0 1 and 0 0 you have error half of the time which is why it looks in looks like this if you now do 1 0 and 0 0 you again get a pattern where half of the time it is up and other half it is down and we have 3 which is 1 1 you have two errors so essentially we have tested that this bit error rate counter functions correctly so again okay, let's get rid of these constant sources uh, we'll keep the u care to float and we'll just put a histogram now the next task for us is to actually get back the constellation by adding a decoder and then checking the bit errors the amount of bit errors so let's just add a constellation decoder so control f for command f we will say decoder we'll get a constellation decoder which uses my cons and we connect this over here we connect this over here we connect the original source over here and we are set we now just need a histogram so control f or command f we'll say histogram now this histogram sync will connect here and we will increase this to 10,040 number of bins can be it doesn't matter 10 because we only are bothered about the value 0 and 1 so we'll go from minus let's say 0 0.2 to 1.2 we are and well actually yeah because we're just counting the number of zeros and ones ones are errors zeros are um, no errors so now let us just execute this flow graph we have a nice triangle standing at zero indicating that there is no error but if i increase the noise you can see that you know there's going to be a large amount of error now if you increase the noise too much then you can see that both of these are at the same height indicating that the bit error rate is half half is interesting because when it is half that means a coin toss will also give you a good enough guess you have no information going through now let's start increasing this by a slight amount <clears throat> as you can see the QPSK constellation keeps going up and up let's actually change the constellation also to have more points so that we get a better kind of blob now if you increase the noise you can see that the constellation grows as the noise starts going to higher values let's say the noise variance a standard deviation gets close to 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 now you are going to start to see some occurrences of some of these symbols crossing over some of these bits crossing over rather and as discussed in the lectures you can see that you are starting to have some bit errors now in this particular case because we are using the inbuilt constellation the EB essentially is the EB over here is es upon 2 so because es is essentially 1 and your eb is half of es so your e s uh, sorry eb is essentially half and n naught is essentially 1 because that's what you chose your noise to be you chose it to have unit variance so if you do the calculation you can find the bit error rate without much difficulty now it is evident that by increasing the amount of noise you are able to clearly observe more bit errors while reducing the amount of noise makes the bit errors fall this one is essentially indicating the number of bit errors 
and by finding out the ratio or fraction of bit errors that you encounter over here and dividing it by the total number of symbols that are sent you can get a good idea of the bit error rate of this system as well in fact this should be consistent with the formula that you use in class to compute the bit error rates as well for example if you set it to close to 0.4 or 0.5 you can see that this starts rising and you can count the number of bit errors and make a claim on the consistency of the formula for the bit error rates as a final step let us also just change this constellation to QPSK and see whether it has any impact yeah it's the same constellation and you can see similar effects over here you're able to observe that if you increase the noise you get more errors now before we close this uh, particular session I want to just give you a small piece of you know advice or warning in case we change this to something else like 16 quam in the case of 16 quam our BER counter will work but the only changes you need to make are that you need to make the random source go from 0 through 16 and you need the BR counter to go from 0 through 4 because in the case of QAM 16 you're going to have 4 bits. So now if you run this as you can see you have a normalized constellation. Now if you start increasing the noise by even a little bit even a smaller amount you're going to start seeing bit errors and for the same amount of noise as you had in the QAM 4 case you're going to have a much much higher impact of noise in the QAM 16 case. So QAM 16 is definitely much less resistant to BERs than QAM 4 as expected. A similar exercise can be done for QAM you know, PAM 8 as well but make sure you change this to 8 and this to 3. In this lecture we have seen how we can build a simple bit error rate testing mechanism in GNU radio. As you have seen with a small extension, we are able to conveniently characterize bit errors without much uh, issue and we can visualize the bit error rate also by comparing the fraction of correctly decoded symbols and incorrectly decoded symbols using a histogram sync as well. In the next lecture, we will put all these things together to come up with a simulation of a practical communication system. Thank you.